Oh, <laughs> you know what time it is, guys. It's tactics with Wardy time. I don't remember the name of <laughs> this uh, this uh, this segment. To be honest, I remember we used to have this tactic segment. It was an official segment, and then I eventually slagged and I forgot about the segment. But anyways, I've been trying, guys. Last time I gave you the tips to beating Fernando Santos, right? And now this week I have debunked or now know or have found why Fernando Santos is very useful in this game. All right, so let's just jump into it. Let's not waste any time. All right, so guys, what happened to me debunking Fernando Santos was this, okay? <laughs> this is a formation that I usually use if you guys follow me and watch my live streams or watch my videos based on my club. So this, by default, this is uh, Velvet because I'm using Velvet's 352 formation or three, yeah, 352 formation to just make it general or you can call it a 3322 formation. So basically, it's always like this. This is the default structure of the formation. And before Data Bank 6, I was winning, to be honest. I was really uh, winning. After Data Bank 6, my team just went from being a winner to just being noobs. Like, I kept on getting countered each and every time, right? And I am, I understand, you could say three defenders, but dude, before those three defenders were acting like five or ten defenders, but after Dark Bake 6, they just became stale. So I tried all sorts of things, guys. I tried bringing back my, my strikers, I tried tweaking the advanced tactics, and now, as you can see, I only use two advanced tactics. I tried everything, man. I tried playing... Force 9 so that one of this could just come and support and act like an attacking midfielder ETC. I tried literally everything. And after having tried for a very long time, guys, this is what happened, right? <clears throat> so I realized, like, this game is more like NBA or basketball. I've never played basketball, but I know basketball is a game of who is going to outscore the opponent. Who's going to score more is the one who wins a basketball match. And in pairs, Defending in pairs is literally broken. You could be a very good defender, okay? But it, one way or the other, you are going to concede. It's very hard to keep a clean sheet in pairs. And it's very hard to keep a lead in pairs. Midfield in pairs is also just broken. And I remember, I was talking to Precision in Discord. Shout out Precision is one of the uh, pairs streamers. And you can check his channel on Twitch. I'll link his channel down below. And he was like, whoa, do you know what? This game has nothing to do with the midfield. The midfield in pass is the worst thing ever. So eventually I got to a point where I was like, so what should I do? Defense is bad. Midfield is bad. And initially I realized CMF or central midfielders in this game are the worst thing ever. They are non-functional. They don't add any value to the game. All they do is pass the ball to the opponent make wrong passes that's all they do so eventually this is what you have to do if you want to win the match so as i was saying the video of this uh sorry the title of this video <coughs> fernando santos is hard to play against because the game is broken so defending is hard in this game and what does fernando santos have he floods with attackers Paz is an outscoring game who is gonna outscore the other first the more you're going to outscore your opponent, the more it becomes easy for you to maintain the game, the more your defense becomes so good. So if you want to, so with Fernando Santos, you, people usually flood the, uh, the, 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 other, the second part of the field or the attacking part, attacking half of the field. And this is what you have to do with Fernando Santos, just flood, be it uh, Attacking midfielders or central midfielders or left midfielders, attacking midfielder and right midfielder. And with my formation, eventually, this is what I discovered. I'm going to put this guy here and turn him into an attacking midfielder. Take this guy here. Keep him either as a cent at our CMF or an attacking midfielder. But best making an attacking midfielder. And with this guys here, try to, you know, this guys, I realize you can just try to make them play here like this so that wing back will, will work effectively because if they attack like this right wing back will not work uh effectively so you have to just put them in the middle so that they become more of central midfielders and they help a bit in attack and 
go go back when it comes to wing back like this they go back and act like uh and guard against someone who spams the wings because when people see a 3d defender formation something in them of spamming crosses just triggers <clears throat> so this is how you do it so eventually you'd want to put defensive setting on onto your defensive midfielder so that he uh, refrains from attacking or going up and he keeps he stays back and become the fourth defender in the middle so spam or flood your team with attacking midfielders and attackers S flood your team with cfs or ss and amfs don't even think about oh my god so it means that my team is gonna attack more and i'm gonna i'm gonna concede from counters that does not work eventually yesterday i got paired or i i got to play against two two freaking challenge badge i could say challenge champion badge players the other guy i won against him i bet him three nil the other guy withdrew one one but i was dominating the whole of the match and because i don't have any he was using i don't remember which featured play he was using and the guy scored the uh scored uh the equalizer eventually this is what you have to do flood your open and steam sorry flood your team with attacking midfielders flood your team with attacking players don't even think about how you're gonna defend or whether you're gonna be uh stunned by a counter flood your team with attackers and that's how you win in pass pass is like basketball all that matters is you outscoring your opponent and that's it so that's all i had to say in this video guys and if you have any more questions just leave them down below and if you have any other things that you want to ask me in terms of tutorials and other things tutorials and other things I can tell, I can do videos about them and EDC. So I just wanted to make a short video and make you guys understand that Paz is not a defending or position football game anymore. It used to be, right? Paz used to be a game whereby <coughs> all the elements of, it, of playing can be used to win a match. You could have been a good defender and used your defensive throwaways to defend and counter open end but jesus man in pass 19 that's almost impossible in pass 19 what works is spamming or flooding your your or your team with attackers i might even go an extra mile of doing this man and you might even see me winning trust me guys this might even work i'm telling you i'm gonna try to play a match with this f setting on and then I'll tell you guys how it would have gone. But for now, I use it like this. For now. <coughs> for now. I use it like this. So, basically, that's why Fernando Santos always wins. Because he has so many attacking players. And he floods your team with attackers. And since in pairs, defensive, sorry, defending is unresponsive. The more pressure your defenders are going to get, the more mistakes are they're going to do. So, basically spam or uh, spam your team with literally uh this spam your team with attackers and everything will be k so for that guys that my friend my friends is undisputed let me show you so right now i think i'm gonna try to spin a bit maybe just try to spin oh shit not that's not what i wanted i'm gonna try to spin a bit and so the team that you just saw there is the highest i can go <laughs> that's the best team i have in this game <laughs> the team you just saw there is literally the best team that i have in this game and you know i don't like i like using a three star team to be honest but when i'm playing the challenge cups i usually go four star because that's the highest i can go so we're gonna try to spin and yeah just see who we're gonna get and i usually use the players i get from spins to boost my three star and four star players and increase their ratings. England, who do we got from England? England's usually goalkeepers. A Super Bowl, man. Really, man? <laughs> a freaking Super Bowl. You gotta give me a Super Bowl of all the things in the world. A Super Bowl. Thank you, Konami. Thank you. Just because I just... I just expose your game does not mean that you give me Super Bowl. So I'm just gonna convert them into trainers. And now I'm now bankrupt, man. Look at my... Look at my... <laughs> I also don't like to go below 50 GP, 50,000 GP, because at times I eventually get to lose so many matches <laughs> that I have to have a low of GP, because if you lose so many matches, 
like my players are gold balls now so their contracts are usually on average like 2000 and if i lose more matches i'm gonna be getting like 1000 and <laughs> the contracts are so high in this game that you have to have a low of gp so basically you gotta go to play a training and train this uh just wait a bit <coughs> <coughs> I just want to check if I have any scouts. I don't have any. So we're going to try to train the players that I have. And see what we're going to get. I have legends but I also always. I usually not always. But I usually like to just convert the legends and feature players that I have. Into regular players. Because I like using regular players. I have a lot against feature players to be honest guys. A lot. But as you can see I have two feature players. That are Pereiro and uh, Las Bender. I don't usually use them, but I always use them in terms of challenge cups when I have to prop my team. Because the other DMF that I have is an 80 and 82 DMF. And you know, in a ch uh, challenge, and Wanyama is a bad DMF. Wanyama is the worst DMF ever. He's very attacking and he does not help at all. So yeah, so I just unpacked. Um, <coughs> Who should I train with the guys that I just unpacked? The guys are literally wingers and RBs and yeah. So maybe I should train this guy and Florenzi or uh, Visa or Weezer. We call him Weezer in English. But Germans, I, I know they call him Visa or Visa, whatever. Uh, not whatever, but yeah, I respect the German language. But I'm just saying, uh, it's not the topic of discussion today. <laughs> so... Let's see, man. You know, I... Jeez, man. I have no idea. Maybe... <coughs> oh, I have Alaba as well as a trainer. Jeez. <laughs> uh, dude, I have no idea how to use this, guys. I'm just going to train this guy with... Um, Shinji Kagawa with... Wait, that did not make any difference, to be honest. With this guy right here, Yuma or Uma, A Uma or A Yuma, or oh, this guy, I have, ah, uh, jeez, man, training is always difficult to be honest. <coughs> Alright, let me train Kagawa. I like Kagawa because his form is always great. 85, yay, he gained something. Hey, well done, Kagawa. Since Kagawa, well done, man. <coughs> is that right? He was 84 before, right? I remember. And, um, Zaha, should I train Zaha? And should I train Last Bender? No, because I don't want him to go above 90. Because if I do that, it means whenever I use him, he's going to boost my team's strength or stars. And I don't want that. Um, Nakamba, alright, no. Should I train Nakamba or Vegino? <coughs> alright. Alaba, I, sh I think I'm going to train um, Nakamba using Alaba. Because I feel like, you know, it might help him a lot. Exactly. Oh, man. Nakamba is very good. 81, yes. Leveled up to 81. This guy called Nakamba is very, very good. So if you know.